Hello and welcome to another episode of the what? Fuck! I'm not recording. What's that? Give me a sec. It's the fuck it. What? <laughs> three at three o'clock on a Thursday. Yeah, but well, first of all, let me record. Let me hit record, then I can yell. Uh, now I'm recording. First of all, start of the NFL season. Both of you rejected my huddle. I'm hurt as we begin this show. I didn't get a huddle. Oh, I didn't get an invite. I invited both of you to a huddle, and I sat there for ten minutes by myself, huddleless, because nobody joined. I got last joined. week's huddle invite, and I was I was there. I never got last week's or this week's huddle invite, dude. I don't know where mm. I'm supposed to get it. Where do the huddle invites go? Because I was I was it was an absent huddle. I would have loved to be in a huddle, especially for opening day, right? Tonight's the first night of the fucking season, isn't a it? A huddle, it by is. the way, is like a Slack audio call uh-huh. or something. Mm. My my phone nor my computer, both of which were in front of me, alerted me to any kind of huddle. It was a rare bath time huddle for me. I was still <laughs> in the bath as I was Dude. trying to get ready for the show. Can I say if I if I do huddle with the two of you, I want you to be in the bathtub. I can make that happen. I like that. I can promise that. <laughs> hey, hold hold on a second. <laughs> let me let me uh, do some. Let me take care of some business real fast. Hold on just a second. Hello and welcome to another episode of the. F- Face podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me, as always, Andrew Panton and Gavin Free. This Hiya. is episode one hundred and seventy-two. Oh, we're almost there. What? To to where? What do you mean? I don't know. Just one ninety-six. That's going to be the banger. That's the one that we've <laughs> agreed is going to be the. <laughs> I think there needs to be a location for you to say we're almost there. <laughs> I think it applies somehow. It definitely. We have 24 episodes before we get to 196. That is that's a like a, almost a half a year. That's Damn. crazy. Really? We're not going to get to 196 until like uh, the winter, I right? like January, February, somewhere around there. Oh wow. Winter of 24. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a great year. <laughs> It's coming back. The good years are coming back. <laughs> what if we did? What if we did a summer of one day, but we do it for a year in the future, and then we just guess what all the best stuff is going to be? Ooh, <laughs> we like to- like Will Smith's going to Will Smith and DJ Jazzy Jeff are getting back together, and in 2026 they're coming out with a song called Toledo, and it's going to be everybody's going to love it. If we say enough shit, we'll eventually be right about something. Yeah, I just want to know where we're going. I'm still stuck up on that. I hate long car rides. I need a location. I need to know roughly. How far? We going to 196? Is that the big thing? <laughs> well, and beyond. 197? Well, and beyond. Okay. But we need a, there needs to be a pit stop somewhere along the way. <laughs> Do you want to take a pit stop at like 182? I like that. Well, just to like sort of take note of where we are and <laughs> how close to 198 we are. <laughs> how about for 182, we all record in a different location, a unique location, and we can share for 182 oh. where our pit stops are. Now, that's interesting. That's interesting. How do what we feel if about that? Y- you record in a different location? What if I record at Gavin's house and he records at my house? Oh, Ooh. that's an option. Listen, I, I want it. I want it to be a mystery. I want it to be a big reveal. So you might mm. do that, but I'm I'm going to not lock that in for me. I'm going to say in my head, they could be anywhere and we'll see what okay. happens when the episode comes. What episode is it? 182, 184. Which one? 184, I think. OK, oh, I'm excited. I think I said 182, but 184 is, feels better. I need a pit stop because it's been 183 episodes of just driving, just well, that, nonstop going. That's like, and I didn't even pick it for this, but 184 would be the halfway point between 172 and 196, I think. So that's perfect. There you go. That's fantastic. I mean, you, you make it sound like you want to stop. No, I don't want to permanently stop. I want to stretch my legs a little bit. I want to <laughs> want to take a little break, what, maybe what in the bathroom. That, what does that mean, though? What does well, that I, mean? I'm viewing <laughs> this podcast as Gavin's saying we're almost there. That makes me think of being like a kid in the car going like, are we there yet? And him going, ah, we're almost there. So I'm envisioning this entire podcast as a road trip now. And we have not taken any breaks. And I hate very long car rides. So a little, a little break to get a snack or like stretch the legs would be good. Is Gavin Ice Cube in this scenario? Oh, I think Ice Cube drove the car, so I don't think so. Well, why don't we just do this? Uh, uh, when we get to 196, we'll all get in a car together. That's 184, we'll start... isn't it? Oh, well, 184. All right. We'll all get in a car together. <laughs> we'll hit play on <laughs> Face Episode 1. Just let it continue. Let them all play and see how far we get. Uh, oh, that sounds terrible. I, that, yeah, it what? sounds like a really What's the, bad idea. I don't understand what the plan is there. To just play the old episodes? 
L- listen to them in the car, see how far we can get before we get up to where we are. Eight minutes. Uh, but where are we going? Before I want out oh, of the I car. still don't know where we're going. <laughs> where are uh, we going, Gavin? Andrew. Yes. It's clear nobody knows where we're going. Why don't you pick where we're going? Yeah, where, where's <laughs> face going to take us? I'm going to pick, like, the grocery store down the street. We're not going far. We're not even going to get past I know the... where we're going. I know where we're going. We're going to where the we going? epicenter of the face universe. Oh, we can see the billboard. Maybe the by billboard. maybe by 196, we'll go to that that spot. Maybe that'll be the that, spot. I don't know if that really lines up, but yeah, maybe. I wonder if this <laughs> is the longest we've talked about jack shit. No, this whole <laughs> no, I, show. What do you think I, this show I, is? I think like we got about 109 episodes of that already. <laughs> yeah, but this is All nothing. Right, let me ask you guys this. Uh, okay, how about this? All right, I want the four of you... To pick a number between 1 and 20. Gavin, what's your number? 17. Okay, a- Andrew? 18. Uh, <laughs> Eric? 19. Need help with the other names. <laughs> <laughs> Nick? 13. What the? F- we had it all set up. Why would you pick 13? I, wasn't, I, wasn't <laughs> I knew the number. I just had to figure out what. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to go closest without going over. Uh, so uh, the number was 16. So Gavin, I guess you're closest. Sick. So I, I, need I went to, over there. No, who who said sixteen? <laughs> no. Who said fifteen? <laughs> I don't think anyone said fifteen. I thought Nick said thirteen. What? I thought Gavin said Gavin said fifteen and Andrew said no. 17. Gavin said seventeen. I said eighteen. I think Eric said nineteen. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, then never and then mind. Nick was teed up for twenty and then went to thirteen. <laughs> oh well, well, it's Gavin. It's Gavin anyway. Gavin's closest. The number was sixteen. So it's anyway. Now, Gavin, so you won that. Gavin, I need you to pick a number between one Congra- and one hundred. Gavin, congratulations! <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. What, what's the, I have to pick another number. Just pick a number between one and one hundred seventy-one. Okay. Uh, forty-eight. Forty-eight picked by Gavin. Good episode. Yeah. All right. We'll discuss that in one eighty-four. Do Do you want to know what for, Do you want to know what forty-eight was about or no? Yeah. Go no. ahead. How do you know it was okay. about face? How do you know it had anything to do with face? Wait, what? Well, because there's what? not 48 episodes of So All Right yet. <laughs> How do you know? Just because I said between 1 and 171, and there's exactly 171 episodes of this podcast, you assume that's what I'm talking about? Oh, okay. So you'll, you'll link the numbers to something else. No, it's, it's definitely episode 48. What was it about? Oh. <laughs> In the anal trenches? Slash I want out of this car. A tub as narrow as Jeff's oh. foot. Jeff, Gavin, and Andrew talk about Gavin's ADR, Nick's theory confirmed, an official face retraction, getting in a dry tub, and missed mechanics. Excellent episode. Okay. Sounds like a banger. Sounds a lot better than this episode. (laughs) (laughs) While we're recapping something, can I I share a a, a big old face that happened to myself? Oh, hell yeah. This week? I made a mistake. So uh, as you guys may know, as you, as you might be aware, I am making a, a, a real push to win the cock award, as I was saying yeah. last time. It was a whole bit I planned out, and uh, as part of the bit, I made a website. And let me tell you the entire, the vision I had for the website that I made. I made this site, and after the presentation, I was going to direct people to it and imply, like, say, like, hey, this, if you click this button... It will like you put in your email and you click a button. It will send an email letting somebody know that they should nominate me because it Don't, has to be oh. a, a department head. That was the idea. But but I thought, you know what? This is I love everybody on the merch team. What I was going to do is say that and, and imply that it was going to the, the head of merch guy that, that did the, the Andrew Halloween thing. But he's great. No issue with him. I was going to apply that. Uh, but then have all of the emails go to Jack's work email and have okay. it say, uh, thank you for subscribing to So All Right every time they put in their email and so that he would blame you, Jeff. But I couldn't figure out how to make that happen. And I also don't know the merch guy that well, and I have no issue with him. So I felt like it might be too mean. And I it just so I dropped the whole website and I didn't do anything with it. I also bought multiple domains because I wasn't sure what to go with. So I bought uh, andrewdeservesacock.com, which was what I built the site off of. (laughs) Yep. Uh, Get Andrew a cock, 
dot com was my other one. And then my last one was cock 2023. Um, <laughs> so I had all these these domains. I built the website when I set up the website. They had different tiers of the website builder. And I went with the second tier that was like 17 or 18 dollars or something like that a month. And it, it allowed 500 outgoing emails per month. So I figured at most Jack would get 500 emails. I wanted like as much as I could without it being completely insane. Mm. So I set all that up, drop it, don't bring it up at all. And then I get an email saying, hey, you're going to get charged for this in like three days. And I went, oh, fuck, I got to cancel that because I dropped it from my bit. It's not even in the presentation anymore. No one's going to go to this site. It's just going to die. And then I forget about it as everyone does with every subscription they intend on canceling. And then yesterday, I got an email for a receipt for it. And I went, ah, fuck. I paid for it. <laughs> Shit, I gotta, I'll just go through this receipt and I'll cancel it. It's like 18 bucks. It sucks, but whatever, I'll live. And I open it and I, I see that I have been charged $200. Whoa. Because I, I paid for a one-year subscription for <laughs> AndrewDeservesACock.com. <laughs> To be active, which is not that's way too much. I don't I can't I can't do that. So I immediately have to go to customer support and get a refund for Andrew deserves a cock dot com. And I'm talking to somebody. I'm having to send them info and trying to get a refund like as your name for a website called you deserve a cock dot com was the time <laughs> it was a very embarrassing reef. I had to send them the order number and then they tried to convince me to keep the site. Because they don't want to give you, they're like, hey, just so you know, this will delete the website immediately if you get rid of it. And uh, I obviously did. But I almost had to pay $200 for AndrewDeservesACock.com. I thankfully was refunded, <laughs> but it was a nightmare. And then so embarrassing to have to like try to talk to someone through a refund process of that. So you were like, it's AndrewDeservesACock.com. And they're like, okay, what's your name? And you're like, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, it was like clearly they have a message press from Andrew and I had to send them the order invoice number so they could pull it up in their system and see the domain and all this stuff. And it was just, it was the worst. Without context, it was the worst refund I could possibly imagine. It was a rough, rough start to the week. <laughs> Thankfully, I got the refund though. If I'd be, it's, that's too, I don't have that type of cock money thrown around. 200 bucks. I think uh, last episode I was wondering if Starfield was going to be a good game. I hadn't really heard much about it. Oh, I, I, think it's, I think it's one of my favorite games ever. I don't, so know what I, was, I don't know anything about it. How far into it are you now? Oh, I'm like 40 hours in. I'm about 30, barely I'm like 32. Done anything. Yeah, same. It is such a great game. Such a oh. great game. I let myself dick around in that game so much. If I'm like on a real mission, I've got to do all this important shit. And then I overhear someone talking about like a lost cabbage in the room next door. Mm -hmm. I just immediately switch to what I'm doing. Or the what? What? <laughs> I left I left New Atlantis about five hours into the game and I just never went back. I just go from planet to planet picking up missions like a like yeah, in Kung, like in cut like a uh, Carradine in Kung Fu. It's fucking awesome. It's such a great game. I'm in a I don't know what to talk about with this. OK. Are we going to talk about the other thing or no? What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> He's talking about the new thing. <laughs> oh! The new thing. Do we talk about that? Because there's a thing in relation to that, but I can't, I can't talk about that unless we talk about the other thing. Are we talking about that? This is why we shouldn't have just started I immediately. I thought we were going to have a conversation because we're going back and forth. I don't know what we're doing. I don't think that one has anything to do with the other. I think we, I just wanted to no, talk about well, Starfield because I, I like I, it. No, you, there, it's... Mm. <laughs> Did, oh, Eric asked if my save file got fixed. No, it, it, it well, sort of. The game sort of fixed itself over time, but it was broken. It was broken for about six hours. What? How was it broken? I lost. The game wouldn't give me quest markers anymore. Oh, oh so like, no. so you know, it's a Bethesda game. So you're and you're on like you're in like Neon City, and you take an elevator to like the fifth floor, and you talk to a guy named Trevor. And then he tells you to go to another planet. And so you have to like write it down because there's no quest marker and then find it on the fucking star map. And then you got to remember like what city did Trevor live in on what planet? What floor <laughs> on the fucking like what oh, office number? Nightmare. It was yeah. really it slowed me down for quite a bit, but I recovered. Did you reset? Like, how did it did it just fix itself? How did that get fixed? Uh, it eventually kind of I, I just it. I think that the the bug was tied to. 
The bug happened when I was completing a, a like a, a final mission in a quest line, which was real bum, bummer. And then it wouldn't let me complete that mission. And then I just eventually did every other quest in my inventory. And there must have been another one in there glitched. And when I did that, it all just kind of started working again. But it doesn't work great. I briefly lost the ability to fire my gun. It just my guns would wiggle when I pulled the trigger, but they wouldn't <laughs> shoot. And then uh, to fix it, I became a woman. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean they would what? wiggle? They, would, they would sort of wiggle. It would be like a little, like, I don't know, a little wiggle of the, the end of the gun. <laughs> Wouldn't shoot anything. And then I went to uh, New Atlantis. I walked into Enhance, changed my appearance, became a woman, walked back out. Guns what? So are you still a woman? Uh, I stayed a woman for a little bit. And then eventually I went back to my... Mm. The, the thing is, I had to like remake my original guy, which I couldn't be bothered to do at the time. Yeah. That's crazy. Did you... Well, wait, what did you... When you flipped, did you... Did you do it with the intent of trying to f solve that problem, or did you? Yeah, just, it was like, something switching? that someone suggested on Google or Reddit or something. Got I just it. like the idea okay. that I just strolled in as a bloke and uh, <laughs> walked out as a woman firing wildly into the air. <laughs> that is really funny. That's the thing with these games is like if anyone has a bug and then they fix it, I want to know how because I just assume <laughs> I'm going to encounter it eventually. Yeah. That uh, yeah, I, it's my quest stuff still fucked up, but at least I can find missions and stuff now, which helps. But that that bug you're describing. Gavin, a lot of people mentioned that they had in that in that early week where it wasn't fully released yet. It was just released for the for people that bought the special edition or whatever. And uh, I was reading that a lot of people were trying to revert to old saves, but that the bug follows you into old saves and it would corrupt old saves. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like goes back in time. <laughs> That's a nightmare. Yeah. But apparently all you got to do is just go to uh, enhance and switch some stuff up and then you're good to go. My recommendation for that game, don't rely on the quick saves or the auto saves. Make shitloads of actual full-blown saves. Yes. I learned my lesson with, uh, I think it was New Vegas. I died while switching, like going into a vault. And so, I, but it didn't register I had died until like I, I hit the button. So my quick save, which was on the other side of the door, was immediate death. And I was in a death loop nonstop. And I was probably like 10 hours into the game at that point, And I oh, lost no. all of my progress. I didn't manual save. So now I'm manually saving everywhere. Everything I do, manual save. Yeah. I, I did a, a, a dumb thing early on in Starfield where, in, in, like, when you're piloting your ship on the left, you have very much like Star Trek, you have like uh, columns, one goes like for missiles, call a column for. Uh, like engine strength or speed, a column for like your shields and then one for your grav lift. And you can raise and lower them so you can like divert power kind of like Scotty does to, you know, like, oh, I'm diverting power to shields. Like you, you literally do that in the game. And I I warped into a planetary uh, orbit where there was a fight going on and I could not win. It, that, like I had a start, start a ship. I hadn't paid any attention to upgrading my ship at that point. And they just like, I tried to win the fight like 10 times and it became clear to me that there was no way I was going to win. And uh, similarly, though, I, like it, the save file starts with me launching into that location. And so I just turned around and just flew the other way. And then every once in a while, you can hit boost and you can very slowly go the other way. And I kept trying to grab jump and it wouldn't let me and it wouldn't let me. And I, I just sailed the other way in space for 22 minutes <laughs> before I realized that I had with the other guys behind me they were at this point they were like 11,000 kilometers behind me but still following me and I'm like what, when, what is the threat distance on this thing you know when do they leave me the fuck alone <clears throat> figuring that like once I wasn't in combat it would allow me to grab jump again I just assumed that it was like a mechanic in the game because it hadn't happened to me yet where I needed to escape from a fight and uh and at 22 minutes is when I looked at the the little columns and realized I had taken all of the grav lift away and put it in shields and that I could have just, I just <laughs> switched that back. And then I, I ju grab jumped out of there immediately. And I had just spent 22 fucking minutes just hitting, <laughs> hitting up on the left stick. Going, <laughs> what? Why? Why? Have you done much planet scanning? Uh, yeah, but you do it on the surface. Like you don't do it. Well, like, you both. From, like, uh, I guess. Yeah, I guess you do. I've done, I've done surface scanning. So for me, like I, I've been focusing purely on scanning. So I do the planetary scan, which I've leveled up, which shows me where all the materials are. So I can land in an area where they're at and then I can scan them quickly. I spent two hours trying to find one species of alien on a planet just running around. I couldn't find it. I've just been trying to clear every planet I land on, essentially, with all Were the they scanning in the sea? stuff. 
They were in the sea. There's yep. some fucking <laughs> sharks and fish and shit that I did not encounter. I hadn't seen them yet. But it was just this funny thing where, like, that's how I spent my night. I was like, I tried for 30 minutes, couldn't find anything. I just had to be like, I am dedicating my evening to discovering this fucking species of alien that I know is here because it tells you if you're in the wrong biome or not. It is in this biome, but I, I don't know where it is. And the fucking little grubs... I don't know if you've seen <laughs> like those stupid little worms that float around uh, in that game where they crawl, they crawl everywhere. They're always blue. Mm -hmm. So like after I'd say at the probably the the 90 ish minute mark, I found one of those randomly on a hill and I got so excited. I was like, that's why I haven't been able to find this. Fucking it's just a tiny, tiny little grub and it was useless. It had nothing to do with anything. It's terrible. <laughs> I, uh, I bought a I bought a house last night, my first house in Aquila City, which I don't know if you've been there, but it's like a big sprawling kind of city. You know how a lot of the cities stack like there's a like there's a sub level and then like a sub sub level. What Aquila City, yeah. it's just all sprawl, like urban sprawl, like Houston. And uh, I they offered me the opportunity to buy a house and I thought, yeah, fuck it. I don't really like Aquila City, but I'll buy a house here just to see what's up. And I bought a house and I spent like a half an hour decorating it and moving stuff around and uh, figuring out where to put my snow globes and shit. And then I went outside and I ran and I did a mission. And then I turned around to go back home and realized I had no idea where I bought that house. And I don't know if it's because my quest marker is fucked up or if it's just the way the game works, but I could, there was nothing pointing me to my house. And it took me about 30 minutes of running around Aquila City checking doors oh, until I found God. out where I lived. <laughs> Just straight going, nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. God damn it. Nope, that's not it. That doesn't look familiar. God, God damn it. And now, I'll be honest, I think the first time I played Skyrim, I had the similar thing when I eventually bought the house in Whiterun. Because uh, I expected it to say, like, my house or my home or something, but it yeah. just says, like, Bree's home or something. So I was running around looking at all the doors. I was like, Bree's home, that's not it. And I just I couldn't find it for ages. <laughs> It's like they expect you to really know where you live. Yeah. Ugh. I they're all tr like traits and stuff you can have. I went with you start with a house. So I started the game $125,000 in debt. Oof. Assuming that was the <laughs> only way to own a home in the game, that was a false assumption. I have a massive regret in starting in the whole 125,000 credits. Yeah, especially cuz I bought my house for 45 grand. What? 45 grand? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how much it? the house on Aquila City costs. 45 grand. Oh my god. I'm never even going to use the house. It's just empty. It's for people that like customizing things. That's not how I play. I yeah. just thought it was the only way to get a house. God damn it. That sucks. I have, uh, I have parents. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin has wonderful parents. <laughs> You chose the parents perk, you fucking loser. Yeah. You didn't pick parents? I pick parents, and a lot of the time I'll be like on important missions, and I'll be like talking to all my <laughs> consolation friends, and then my parents will just be there. They'll be like, oh, hi, how are you doing? How are you doing at work? And I'm like, I'm like, mom, You're embarrassing me. <laughs> You're mocking him, Jeff. You have no idea what those parents will do for you. Okay, there's a, your dad... He's deep in the poker world, okay? Do you have parents, too? Of course! Oh of course I went God. with parents. <laughs> oh, my Lord. you go with parents? <laughs> I got plenty in the real world. I don't need fake parents. <laughs> yeah, but I, I wanted good ones, so it's, it's, this is my... Oh. This, is my <laughs> this, is this game's a real fantasy for you. Oh, man. God Andrew's damn. seen a little bit of my world. I have. I've seen his character. I've seen his, the, the name. Great name. What is your name? Uh, dark Bastard the Second. <laughs> nice. Because uh, in, in Skyrim, I played a dark elf, and I just called him Dark Bastard. And I just feel like they're related. Andrew, what's your guy's name? I think it's just Andrew. I don't have a fun name. <laughs> <laughs> I should have went Johnny Caviar. That would have been the better. <gasps> oh, such an oh, easy go-to. That's, that's a great name. What about you, Jeff? I made the oldest character I could make. Uh, and uh, like liver spots, shock white hair, big bushy mustache, and I named him uh, Lil Jeffy. <laughs> so, <laughs> I adventure around the, the universe as Lil Jeffy. So your Starfield characters are Dark Bastard the Second, Lil Jeffy, and Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Did you see the the list of names that the robot? I got I got a lot of messages about the fact that your robot you you. Get called Captain Whatever by the robot you have on your crew. It's like the first crew member you get. 
and one of the available options is <laughs> face. <Captain laughs> face. Are you serious? Yeah, it says it within the game. Oh, I had no idea. So if you name your character <laughs> face, it will call you Captain <laughs> face. Whenever, There's also uh, apples in the game that are called cosmic apples. I saw oh, that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder if I wonder if it has to be one word though, otherwise he'd probably call you Captain Face. <laughs> yeah, there'd be a bleep otherwise. <laughs> I think that it's a holdover thing from like uh, the last Fallout game, not seventy six, the one before it. Four. Mm. Uh, I oh, think yeah. I think that was a name that you could use also. Um, so that's like a little thing. What was that bloke? What's the robot you have at the beginning Jeeves, of Fallout? Jeeves jumps, jumps. O Otis <laughs> Jeeves. I think What's his name? Jeeves. <laughs> Fallout. Fallout oh, I thought 4. he had like a real human name, but uh, yeah, he calls you by the name you type in if it's on the list. It's my favorite Bethesda game, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm engaged in the world and in a way that I haven't been. And I was thinking about, because I love Fallout 3 and the Fallout games. I never really played Skyrim. I think what I like so much more about Starfield is even though Fallout Codsworth. is like... Codsworth, yeah. Yeah, Thanks, Codsworth. Nick. Great call. Um, even though like Fallout is such an extreme version of Earth, it's like you're dealing with someone without flesh. Like, it's still grounded in our reality. As opposed to Starfield and in space, it feels like so much more is possible. And I can encounter anything, essentially, on any mission. It's just so much more mi uh, mystery and intrigue in my exploration of those worlds. I jumped into a new system and I got contacted by a ship that was nearby asking about my extended warranty. <laughs> yeah, so did I. Did you pay for a warranty thing? I didn't have enough cash at the time. I wanted to Here's get the, the ultra executive premium plan or whatever for 200,000. Yeah, so he only offers you up to what you have, and I have 135,000 credits. I haven't paid off my mortgage yet, but I'm about to do it. And then I encountered him, and he offered me $100,000 ship insurance, which I wanted just to see what would happen, but then it would completely reset my mortgage <laughs> pro process. So I didn't take it. He just flew away. But I'm, I'm, I want to get the top tier one as well. I had a moment today where I, uh, when I was playing at lunch, where I, I was following up one of the main missions, you know, to find the artifacts, and I went to the eye for the first time. Have y'all ever been to that place? Yeah. And they have those tubes that you can walk around on the left and the right that are fully glass and three. Yeah, and there's like degrees, a so you can mop and a pile of you. trash at the end of each one. Yeah, and like a, a note on the one on the right you should pick up. But, uh, but you walk in, and it's kind of like it's kind of like when you go through those enclosures at the aquarium where there's where you're, you're walking in like a tube and there's sharks swimming all around you and you feel like super immersed. And I was just, I just stopped and I was looking out at space. And as I was doing it, a ship came by and then it warped away and then another ship came by. And I, after like three minutes, I realized I was just standing there just like watching ships go in and out of orbit around me. And I was just, I'd forgot that I was playing the game. I was just in like, just sucked in to the fucking They do universe. such a great job of making the world feel alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's this, it's such a subtle touch. Like cyberpunk kind of looks the same, yeah. but it just feels so, the NPCs all just feel like such empty headed drones in comparison yeah. to Starfield. Mm -hmm. It's can, great. Yeah, I'm it's so a really, fun with this game. really, really great video game. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. And we're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor, which I've had a lot of. I've never had a mind voodoo crazy neighbor, but I've had neighbors that would destroy walls. I've had neighbors that... Uh, <laughs> had affairs in like very public ways uh weird garden vibe neighbor i've had all sorts of weird neighbors all from one house weirdly enough it was like a weird house magnet for people but anyway that's not important we're what is important is us talking about our sponsor fume and how they look at the problem in a different way not everything in a bad habit is wrong so instead of drastic uncomfortable change why not just remove the bad from your habit fume is an innovative award nominated device that does just that Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. Another thing about Fume is how cool it looks. It's beautiful real wood, and the shape is awesome. It's just something that you would feel really cool using. 
Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. It has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code FACE to save 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code FACE to save an additional 10% off your order today. The best way to learn a language is through immersion, living where the language is spoken natively and using it every day. But that's not possible for everyone. So what's the second best way to learn a language? Babbel. Because with Babbel, you can start speaking a new language in just three weeks. This summer, you can start speaking a new language with Babbel. Why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. Babbel has so many convenient courses that help you learn real-life conversation skills, making it easy to pick up on how to order food, ask for directions, speak to merchants without having to consult language apps while on vacation, which is something you never want to do. It just takes you out of the experience, so use Babbel instead. Plus, with Babbel's speech recognition technology, it helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent, which is so important to me, in my opinion, if you don't know how to pronounce a word correctly, it's almost like not knowing it at all. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove that Babbel is better. For instance, one study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. With over 10 million subscriptions sold, Babbel is real language learning for real conversations. Here's a special, limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash face. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash face, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash face. Rules and restrictions may apply. We're in the fall season. It's a busy time of year. There's activities, family stuff, work. It's just there's a lot going on. So I'm here to talk about Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. It can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Too busy this fall to cook but want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Then get back to crushing your goals. Adjust your stride this autumn without missing a step. Choose from 34-plus weekly flavor-packed, fresh, never-frozen meals ready to eat in two minutes. Level up with Gourmet Plus options prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. Treat yourself to upscale meals with premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. Too busy running around during the day to think about lunch? Keep your energy up with Lunch To Go, effortless wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go, no microwave required. Looking for calorie conscious options during the busy season? Try delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories Per serving. This September, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash face50 and use code face50 to get 50% off. That's code face50 at factormeals.com slash face50 to get 50% off. Oh, man. Hey, I got a question for y'all. Um, yeah, I, I was listening to Howard Stern the other day, and they were playing some... Uh, some. I don't know if you guys know this, but a, a lot of Howard Stern fans, they'll yell Baba Booey at sporting events, like in golf mm -hmm. uh, or in tennis to try to get heard or in baseball or whatever. And I got to thinking... Now, I'm not saying that anybody, like regulation listeners or, or comment leavers, should ever do this. Uh, I'm not insinuating that at all. I really am not. But I was wondering, like, if we had something like that, what would it be? What would our hmm. Baba Booey... Like, what would be the... Face Baba Booey, would it be eat the pencil? Yeah, or Eric's email address? 
<laughs> Eric's email address is a good one. <laughs> Just email uh, Jeff's boss at eric.com or whatever the fuck that email was. There you go, <laughs> Jeff's boss. Yeah, eat the pencil, I think, is perfect because that's, that's got the deepest lore in the podcast, I think. I like that. I was also thinking somebody screaming, you got caviar would be pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> or, or just Johnny Caviar in general. But yeah, I agree. Eat the pencil seems to make the most sense. But I don't know. I'd never, th- I just, I, I just uh, hadn't thought of, I don't it know what our version of that would be. The same legs or like length of history, but imagining a crowd yelling ham fan at somebody who has no idea what it means <laughs> is really funny to me. <laughs> I barely remember what that means. <laughs> Was this a li- license plate somewhere? Was yeah, it? Was, <laughs> Jeff loved the license plate. Hey, I'm he had a ham fan plate. <laughs> I just like imagine someone getting ready to take a shot in golf and then the entire crowd just starts chanting ham fan, ham <laughs> fan. And they have no idea why. <laughs> it sounds it's so like, funny. Sounds like such an insult. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> you ham fan. <laughs> I gave you guys some homework. I don't know if you've done it. I'm not sure if you want to touch on that yet. Oh, what are your thoughts? (laughs) Jeff was stressed about it. Oh, man. Well, you took the easy one. Oh, I took the easy one? Yeah. Can we talk about that Gavin had this idea and then (laughs) flew to a different country and he could have given us a week to prep, (laughs) but instead decided to give us an hour? The uh, The only reason we even did it is because I overheard it when Emily was listening to the episode, and I thought, Gavin never gave us the stupid prompts, and I asked about it, and then I immediately regretted asking about it. So this was based on uh, my game as a kid called Punchlining, where I would just say the ends of jokes that weren't real in front of people we were walking past, and all my friends would laugh, and it would make it seem like I was really funny to strangers, even though there was no real (laughs) joke. And um, apparently I was going to come up with some punchlines, and you guys had to make the jokes, (laughs) figure out what the joke was. Uh, So I've given you the homework. I also preface this by saying I don't know. <laughs> like I was looking at these prompts having absolutely no idea what I would do. I don't know how you get anything usable out of these. Well, I also would challenge based off these punchlines that anyone thought you were funny as they walked by. <laughs> I don't think that that would be the, the assessment they would have yeah. in hearing what these punchlines are. Well, I was, I was like 13, so I, you know, we all thought we were very funny, but I assume no it's one was even funny paying attention. Bit. But I don't think anyone who passed you walked by thought, wow, that guy's funny. That was <laughs> yeah, I nailing it. I, I bet one person did. I bet it worked I, on I, one person. I, I would like to know who they are. <laughs> Who's the one person that was deceived? They're probably not still alive. This was 30, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, he did that. It was, it was, a, it was a little old lady who thought, oh, he seems like a, young, a, a, a good young lad. And oh, look, everyone's laughing. He must be the... He, like. He's delightful. What a little comedian. And she's, she's, you know, she's passed on since then, but she was a lovely woman. Shall I say, shall I say what the, the punchlines were? Yes, please. <laughs> wait, what? No, wait, what? 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 Why would you do that? Because then we would have to hear what you came up with as the joke. I thought the whole point would be to say the joke and then they would hear the punchline and oh. the joke as opposed to you oh. saying the punchline and then us telling a joke for a punchline that has already been said. That feels backwards. I mean, it's your thing. We'll do whatever you oh, want to do. You got me all I just assumed confused. that. I don't know which way we should do it. Well, this is your bit, <laughs> Eric. Eric, help. I, I mean, I mean, the way that Gavin was gonna do it, I thought that it was gonna be he gives you the punchline and then you guys work yeah. backwards and write the joke and it leads to the punchline. So there's a build that you're going to. But Andrew's saying, what if we tell the whole joke and then when it's punchline time, Gavin delivers the punchline. Oh yeah is never going to get a laugh, so I think we should do it that way. Uh-huh. Uh, none of these are getting a laugh anyway. You don't know the source material. Yeah, I also I, didn't intend I for think, Gavin to yeah, deliver I'm the punchline. You wrote, you, but, but you, wrote, you wrote the punchline. I think you should deliver the punchline. Right, I, agree, I regret asking I mean, you I mean, your you're opinion. The, it's, <laughs> I actually like that idea. <laughs> I mean, doesn't that make sense? No. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, it is sort of an odd thing for a person to tell 95% <laughs> of the joke and then hand off the punchline. To be fair, Gavin... Gavin wrote the punchline. I, uh, yeah, he did. I was just gonna read. I was just gonna read the punchlines, and then we would go to your jokes. Uh, I mean, if we're putting this in, in the world of reality, Gavin does have a point in which if somebody wrote a comedian a joke, they don't get prompted in the crowd <laughs> to, to, to swing it home. But I like the idea of Gavin <laughs> saying the punchline to these jokes. Okay, as we'll do it however you want. You have want. a way that you can like. Could you? Well, it's your bit. It's your decision. You should go with it. Whatever you want, Gavin. 
You got a lot of choices here. Yeah, I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> Andrew, tell your joke. Well, I have to tell my joke. Well, is that what you want, Gavin? Uh, Let me pull up the punchlines. I'll tell you what the audience wants. The audience wants a decision. So the punchlines were like, uh, two of them were like anecdotal <laughs> jokes, and the, the third one was just like a set-up line, punchline sort of joke. Jeff, you tell your joke. <laughs> no, I called, I said you tell your joke first. <laughs> first I'll tell you why you have to tell your joke first. Because you, you picked the punchline. <laughs> You staked said, claim. No, I didn't. To, you no, staked I didn't. claim to a punchline. No, I, no, I didn't. I, I no, regret everything I didn't. about this stupid bit. This is gonna be. I can't wait. I genuinely. I think there were 172 in. I think this is genuinely the first time that I can't wait to see what the audience reaction to something is going to be. Uh, oh, no. This is going to be. I just a disaster. I, I, that's, I think that's extreme. I just want it to be known. I didn't pick one. I said I had one in mind for one. But if you wanted it, Jeff, you could have it. That's not a declaration. That is just me saying I had something prepared. You said if, if nobody cares, I want this one. And who's going to be rude and say I care? I was like, okay, you can have it. But you took, you took the best one. The easiest one. Maybe not the best one, but the easiest one. So please, show us what you did with it. <laughs> well, that's, I want that to be my closer. So I'm going to go with the other one. So how we divided this is I have one... Jeff has one, and then we're both doing one. So do you want to do the one we're both doing? Oh, I couldn't come up with one for that one. Which one is that one? It's <laughs> a good question. Which one is it? Is it one, two, or three? Two. Uh, I didn't do one. I had a premise, but I couldn't get there. Uh, well, I also have a premise, and I couldn't get there. But I'll I'm tell you do something. Anyway. I've, I've never wanted a bit to be cut out more than this bit right now. Like, yeah, but I you can't say that because you'll turn okay. the audience against us. Yeah. What do you mean? Okay, you ready? Know about it. What do you mean? Are you ready? Are you ready for this joke? I want to hear it. Okay, now Gavin, you're going to yell the punchline, okay? Because that will oh. really spice it up. Okay. So, so a couple, a couple goes in to uh, a, a store to get their passport photos done, okay? And the 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 she has feathered hair, and they're going in. They get their photos done. They walk up to the guy behind the counter, and they're like, "Hey, I would like to get some passport photos done." And uh, the guy thought that was a little bit strange. Uh, because uh, he just it's an unusual situation, but he said, okay, it's uh, $20 for both of you. And so he he took, he, he gets the guy in, and you got to do the thing, you can't smile or whatever, and, and he takes the photo, and then uh, and then he, he goes and he, he gets the, the other person ready, and it's you know, to make sure they understand how to sit in the chair and all that, and they don't know if to say smile or not. <laughs> and then the guy... The guy comments, uh, I've never taken a passport photo for a goose before. Oh, you're doing that one. <clears throat> that's not a goose. That's my wife. But that's my joke. Oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. You were supposed to be. The this is the best thing. <laughs> this is literally the best thing we've ever done. <laughs> Why would you tell my joke? I said one, two or three. And you said not the first one. That's the first one. <laughs> was that the first one? I yeah, yeah. Don't do the first, the first one. one. That's mine. You said not the first one. Yeah, oh. don't do the first one. It's mine. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you meant I didn't do one for the first one. Not don't do the first one. <laughs> no, Jesus I said not in the world. <laughs> well, Jeff, this why don't you do it now? Okay. No, no, you do it. Jeff, okay. do it now. So two dude geese were uh, were supposed to be at work one day, but they decided they wanted to play goose hooky. And so they were hanging out by the pond. They were checking out all the hot lady <laughs> geese because it was just about mating season, you know. And uh, I'll be honest, geese are misogynistic. I'm not. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a goose. I want that to be clear. This isn't me. These are the geese talking. And, uh, but, you know, this, uh, the geese, are, they're, they're macho. They're, they tend to be. They're, they're, they're kind of, I'll be honest. Geese are kind of dicks. Uh, I'm not a big fan of geese. Even less of a fan of swans. And uh, anyway, they're saying stuff like, oh, look at the webs on that chick's feet. And uh, whoa, check out her tail feathers. Well, goose number one, his wife was running goose errands that day. <laughs> and she happened to see him uh, on the other side of the pond playing hooky. So she thought, I'm going to get this guy. He needs to be, he should be at work right now. And uh, so she, uh, she walks over there and get angrier and angrier. And with good cause too, because here he is ogling all these other geese but mrs goose was incredibly beautiful as far as ganders go she was extremely shapely and had the softest feathers you've ever seen so she comes up behind him and she taps him on the shoulder while he's in mid comment and he and the and the and goose number two who's never met his wife spin around goose number one his his goose mouth drops he doesn't know what to do goose number two points at her chest and says oh my god look at the goosebumps on that one 
And goose number one says, that's not a goose. That's my wife. There you go. <sighs> so that's the only one everyone did. No, <laughs> oh. I want it on record that Jeff <laughs> replied to the text saying, I've got number two. He specifically declared oh. he wanted two. Yeah, not but then my I changed fault. my mind. Not my fault. So no one did <laughs> number two. So no one did two? No, number two's uh, punchline. Oh, you, have you done one? No, uh, okay. I, I, I couldn't get there, but I had a premise. I'll tell you it after. Number two's punchline was, beats me, he wasn't even wearing them. I was trying to write a joke there about a kid who kept jacking off into his tube socks and having to keep asking mom for more tube socks and she didn't understand where they were going because he wasn't wearing them, she never saw them. But I just couldn't figure it out. I got lost with him trying to bury the tube socks in the backyard and I just... Yeah. It's really funny to me that that's what you had in your head when you declared, oh, I got this, I got two. And then it, the first never, thing I of. it never went past that. This is genuinely my favorite. Ever done. <laughs> Are you ready? Stuff. We would have breezed by this if Jeff didn't over. I think I don't think any of us remembered this bit. Oh. So now are we doing joke number three? Am I closing? What was your premise for that? When you said you had one as well? No, I didn't. I did the first one. I uh. I thought you'd do two, and then gotcha. we both do one of them. I guess one, even though we didn't communicate that. Um. Okay. I have tears running down my face listening to that. Well, Gavin, this you got to get ready for the punchline. This line. is so fucking funny. I love this. I love the way it's structured. I love that everyone got homework. I love that no one likes it. This is genuinely everything that this podcast is about. Uh, it's fantastic. Okay, so this is the premise for the third joke. Is uh, We're in a bar, and the door swings open, walks in, sits down next to a guy immediately says to the guy, weakening economy convinces central bank to hold key rate for now. And the guy says, what? And it says back to him, the Bank of Canada decided to hold its key interest rate steady on Wednesday and been mounting evidence the economy is slowing. But the central bank isn't declaring victory yet as it remains cautious to not fuel speculation about rate cuts. With recent evidence that excess demand in the economy is easing, and given the lagging effects of monetary policy, Governing Council decided to hold the policy interest rate at 5%. The central bank said in a news release, however, the Bank of Canada is keeping the door open to more rate hikes, noting its Governing Council is still concerned about inflationary <laughs> pressures and is ready to raise interest rates further if needed. Canada's inflation rate was 3.3% in July, Ticking up from 2.8% in the previous month. Although inflation has slowed considerably since last summer, it's expected to hover around 3% for months to come. The central bank acknowledges that inflation will even likely flare up due to higher gasoline prices before coming back down. BMO chief economist <laughs> Douglas Porter said the Bank of Canada's decision to hold its key rate was widely expected given recent weak economic data. Now the focus is turning to what the central bank might do as next it wrestles inflation down while trying not to send the economy into a deeper slowdown than necessary. They've clearly left the door open for possibility that they might uh, move again, Porter said. But our view is that provided growth remains relatively calm and core inflation does continue to slowly come down, that the Bank of Canada is probably done hiking interest rates. Statistics Canada reported last week Real gross domestic product con contracted in the second quarter, which convinced <laughs> forecasters that another rate hike would be unlikely. The Canadian economy has entered a period of weaker growth, which is needed to relieve pr uh, price pressures, the central bank said. Canada's labor market has almost lost some of its steam. The unemployment rate has been on the rise for three consecutive months. Porter says economic growth will likely continue to stall over the next few quarters, making a recession a possibility. We might not fall into up. the official recession definition, but it's going to be a close run for sure, Porter said. Reaction from Canadian Stop. commercial banks on Wednesday was nearly uniform. You're an idiot. The central bank is unlikely to raise interest rates again, despite its hawkish tone to Wednesday. But in order to keep inflation <laughs> expectations in check, economist Tu Nguyen, I'm sorry, I'm probably with, Nguyen. A, Nguyen. with accounting Nguyen. and consultancy firm RSM Canada said the Bank of Canada will likely hold its key interest rate at 5% in 2024. A premature rate cut could send Help. businesses and consumers out burrowing and spending risk reaccelerating inflation again, Nguyen said in a statement. 
Now the guy replied, "Why well, I didn't know any of that." <laughs> to which the the response to that was, "Biden cancels oil and gas oh. lease in Arctic refuge." Uh Juneau, Alaska, in an aggressive move that Stop. angered Republicans, the Biden administration canceled the s seven remaining oil and gas no. leases in Alaska's Arctic no. National Wildlife Refuge on Wednesday, <laughs> overturning sales held in the Trump administration's waning days and proposed stronger protections against. <laughs> oh, you ruined the joke. Oh, you weren't done? No! <laughs> oh, Stepped on no. my punchline. Sorry. No, Sorry, I wouldn't want to... Go on, keep going. I lost my place, so I'll have to start from the beginning. An aggressive move that angered Republicans. The Biden administration canceled the seven remaining oil and gas leases. I thought it'd be something like, you know, it was something about Arctic. running a story of, I don't know, uh, these people with legs, I don't know. Like a real, a real quickster. Like, uh, what do you call Pete Davidson at the beach? A newspaper with legs, because he's got all those oh. shitty tattoos that are yeah. all over his body. Perfect. Something like that. That was ideal. No, so this, what I did is I bought a newspaper, <laughs> and uh, I was just gonna, I was just reading the stories of the paper, right? and I was just gonna keep doing this, and then eventually the guy would get mad, and then the bartender would say, hey, you can't get mad at him, he's a newspaper with legs. Because he was gonna, I was gonna read the whole paper and then say the next day it happened again, but it was the same stories because he's he got printed on that day. Oh. So it'd just be the same thing every. Day. That was the whole. You got but pretty you cut far. it off. Well, sorry, I'm sorry to cut it off. Um, yeah, I was I halfway love through. To have heard. Oh, not even. <laughs> Listen, the people are gonna want to know about felony conv convictions vacated for U.S. Navy officers and bribery scandal, but they'll never know now. Well, will, the, will this episode need a credit to the person who wrote that newspaper? Like it was, yeah. it was like twenty percent. Yeah. Uh, Oh, the smileys! Uh, I'm I uh, I never got around to mention it to you guys, but I I cooked these for this episode so I can t try them. Oh, how are they? I don't know. I haven't eaten them yet. They've been going oh, cold sorry, while you've been while you've been reading distracted. the newspaper. <laughs> 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 Did you salt them? Are you doing any condiments? What's the no? Process? They're just I'm just having a plain. I'm just having a pure. I'm gonna try it right now. Should we see okay. you eat them? Yeah. No <laughs> condiments, huh? <laughs> you know me. Uh, okay, here we go. It was warm 30 minutes ago. We'll see. <laughs> uh, Millie, smiley face. Millie the texted me typically is some ketchup in the eyes. Millie texted me today oh. and she said, what the fuck are those? And I was, I was <laughs> she said they look like deep fried scrub daddies. Did you apologize for preventing her from experiencing them as a child? No. Oh. It doesn't taste like anything. Huh. Well, it, could it possibly be because you didn't season them in any way? Uh, I guess. I I mean, I don't season tater tots. They taste good out out of the fucking oven. I'm jealous. Yeah. You're eating one of those. I I, I I can always feel what that tastes like. Well, you have a bag. Yeah, I didn't cook them up though. <laughs> no, that's fair. Uh, it's okay. Maybe it's probably better hot. Probably better hot in the kitchen. <laughs> it's better before the jokes. They were, when they were hot <laughs> before the newspaper, uh, yeah, they were probably pretty good. Yeah. So are you blaming Gavin for that, for sidetracking your bit? No, not at all. I, feel like I, just, am, I, just, wish that I, I just wish that I'd eaten them when they were warmer because I, uh, I let the episode get away from me. I was going to do it right out the gate, and then I just got distracted. It's nobody's fault but mine. Anyway, okay. they're like, whatever, they're six. A well, six? Um, I apologize for the worst bit. In face history, um, oh, I, the bottom I of my heart. There, disagree. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you guys: Do you think this was a legit? Uh, do you think this was a this? Do you think this was our first bad episode? No. Um, oh, okay. I mean, do you think this is one of like? Do you think this was a bad episode? <laughs> no. Okay. Do you think this was I our think best episode? Well, I don't know because I laughed a lot, but I don't know if that's a good barometer. Yeah. I'm thinking about someone driving to work and they're listening to Andrew read the newspaper like it's NPR. <laughs> and, and it's a comedy podcast where you guys talked about Starfield, Baba Booey, and Potato Smileys. <laughs> but we also heard a lot of the newspaper. <laughs> Listen, that wasn't my choice. Gavin made the punchline. I was just following through. <laughs> hey, let me ask you guys a question. 
This is something I was thinking about the other day. Let's see what you guys think about it. What do you think the most important letter in the alphabet is? Uh, I have an answer. I have an answer. I'm going to convince T. you. You said P as in Paul? No, T. Oh, T as in Tom? Okay. Yeah. I feel like R is pretty important. R. Eric? You, you know what? I'm going to go. I, I was thinking a consonant. I'm going with a vowel. I'm going with A. Okay. A is a good one. Uh, I think it's a great. One. I think it's arguably. I think it's definitely more important than the other two. I think the correct answer is E, and here's why. Have you ever said the alphabet? You can't even you can't even pronounce most letters without E. You've got B, C, D, E, mm. G, H, oh, J, K. K. Well, that's <laughs> A one. And he was he was going so P, well, and it was going great. Yeah, he, S, was, he was really crushing oh, it, and then he got the H, and it really threw. V, oh. He he almost. X, I thought he was going to say. I, I thought he was going to say Z. Y, like I. You I he was say you can't pronounce it. You can't like, even have like sixteen letters without the letter E. It's woven into the fabric of all other letters. It is the it is the Trojan horse of letters. So if we had what what is the what are the epi- uh, bless you what are the thank you. Letters that we can use that don't contain E's. Like, if we had to go E-less, what would our bank of letters be? A. Uh, I guess not F. E- F has an E sound in it. F, uh, G- H. Like, F. Oh, oh. That's an E. H. F. Yeah. I. I agree. J. K. I think- M. N. Not M. O. M definitely has an E. M. I guess if you say M or M. M. M is an E, yeah. N. <laughs> o. O is a good one. Q. Yeah, there's no good. It's, 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 it's yeah, not, dregs not of letters. Not great. I don't know why, but it just it's popped into my head. Like, it's weird that you need letters to pronounce other letters. What if we try and yeah, come like, up with the longest E list word? Well, I think Google could help us with that real fast. What is the longest word with no E? <laughs> Definitely. But it, transubstantian, <laughs> transubstantiation the list. Yeah, but that's not. Substantiationalist. Oh, trans. Like it's without an it's without an e, e sound. sound. Yeah, and I T has saying. an E. Yeah. Yeah. P has really. an E. No, you're right. Train. What? Train. <laughs> what? Trap. <laughs> I still trying to think of a word without an E sound. Rhythm. Train. Oh, rhythm. rhythm. No, yeah, but that's still not the right. That's not using the right. It's not the right yet. letters. Right. I get what you're saying. Oh, I see. Without using any of the alphabet, I thought we were just doing a long no e sound word. I understand now. Yeah, yeah. All the, all the shit that Jeff just said. <laughs> it definitely, if there was going to be an election amongst the letters, it has the most supporters. Oh, dude, you are you kidding? <laughs> they, the other letters fucking large rely on e in a large part. They, can you imagine if there was no e? How much fucking heavy lifting a would have to do to pick up the slack? <laughs> A, bay, say. <laughs> Day. A. A. Gay. Gay. Hey. Oh, my God. Oh. A newspaper with legs. <laughs> Okay, this is now a fever dream. Beats me. He wasn't even wearing them. Did you ever use any of those, Gavin? Were those originals or were those from your past hits? I think I used the top one, but the other ones, the other two are fresh. <laughs> fresh is a word. Well, I didn't have, uh, really have to change them because I don't think we ever walked past the same person twice. This might be the first time I've ever bought a newspaper in my life today. <laughs> Do you think it'll be the last time? Uh, sadly, yeah, probably. I had a I had a thought about you, Gavin, the other day. Oh, ooh, yeah. I uh, you know, I, I've been I've been reading a lot lately uh, because somebody got me a Kindle, and so uh, and I've also been watching a lot of documentaries. I've been I've been really focused on or really interested in in early twentieth century explorers, like people that explored the Amazon or the desert or uh, the Antarctica or whatever. And it it struck me. And I'm sure a lot of this has to do with colonization and wealth and the opportunity that wealth provides. But it struck me that over the last like 200 years, most of the great explorers or the most successful explorers in the world have been British or from the UK, right? Like the people that have made all the major discoveries in the Amazon and the Antarctica and in the Himalayas. And they're almost always British. 
almost as if they had like a monopoly on adventure and bravery. Uh, but then there's you. <laughs> and that was my thought. It's like these people, these these British men would submit themselves to like all all manner of danger uh, from the environment, from animals, from man. They're fighting stuff like dengue fever and crocodiles. And then there's you, a guy who can't wash dishes without gloves. How did that happen? I mean, I can do it. It just makes my hands feel funny. (laughs) (laughs) Same with emptying a fresh dishwasher. If the plates plates and glasses are still hot, they're they're too too grippy. You know, there's like a weird grip factor that happens that makes me feel funny. (laughs) I think what's impressive about Gavin is how many states have you been to? Like 30 of the states? Uh, 20... Six or something. So the problem with him is that he's well traveled. He just hasn't done anything at any of these places. He hasn't discovered anything. Well, what's up to like discover? The- Look, I'm born. I was born in the very, very small window of human history where you can't explore shit. All right. It's it's everything on Earth is mapped. You know, maybe aside from the ocean. And it's right before everyone pisses off and explores space. I've got nothing. If if I wanted to be an explorer, I was born. At the, at the complete wrong time, and it's bullshit. <laughs> Hold on a second. Do you want to be an explorer? Uh, how many, how much of the Earth? I've also, I've discovered like 50 new species in Starfield. It really doesn't feel hard. I'm questioning your, your work ethic here. You think I just haven't made the effort? This. I think so. I don't think Well, I mean, I've got, I've got my mushrooms and my slime. I think potentially they're done. That's true. Hey. Oh, dude. Yeah, but that's I, in your backyard. I've seen, we've I've seen, seen the, the slime, slime in person. Hand. Yeah, it's fucking. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've seen the slime. I'll tell you this. It's from all the heat. It's, yes, it is. It's not, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look like it's supposed to be there. And it doesn't look like something that you should just leave alone. <laughs> but he, he, Gavin seems determined to ignore it. Look, if I was an explorer, I'm not, I'm not there to displace the people already there or mess with the ecosystem. Of I'm just here to not. observe. Well, that's not very British of you now, is it? Not really. No. Well, I'm Italian. So, according to... Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, they, yeah, they have uh, a much better record. Classically much, known for uh, not displacing uh, Not much better. <laughs> They, uh, <laughs> Gavin, you'll be happy to know, uh, and maybe this will awaken something inside of you, deep inside of you from your ancestry, but I'm going to guess not. Uh, 65% of the planet remains unexplored. Whoa. Yeah, but is it under the ocean? Uh, most of it, but not all of it. It says most of it. That means there's probably at least uh, 10%. Okay, can you put it? Obs- I'll walk around and you'll let me know if there's anything new to discover in this biome. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't want to be looking in the in the wrong place for a, a shark that's not on land. <laughs> I think I think maybe let's start small before you start crossing the ocean or going down to the bottom of the ocean. Let's start small. Deal with your slime. See where the slime takes you, and then we'll sort of figure out if you need to like go to the Mariana Trench or something. Okay. Like, yeah, baby steps, I guess. You baby should steps. do a slime scan. <laughs> Hit left bumper on your slime. Yeah, but then I'll only be at 30, 13%, I think. And I need to find <laughs> more slimes. <laughs> and you've only got the one. <laughs> Next time you travel somewhere, can you just hold your controller and just walk around clicking left bumper going, scanned it, got it. 88%. Great British explorer, Gavin Free. You've even got the name for explorer. Yeah. Big yeah. You, got, you were born yeah. with, a, with an explorer's silver spoon in your mouth. When, with the weather changing soon, uh, as we're in uh, mid-September, I think when this comes out, uh, like late September, when the weather changes, do you think your um, your slime is really going to come alive for you in like the back kind of half of the year or what? Yeah, I think as soon as the rain starts hitting and maybe the, the grass is all, you know, like dewy, I think, I think the slime will reactivate and start spreading again. Maybe I'll time lapse it. Oh, that's interesting. I would love to see time lapse. What an episode. I don't think what an episode that kind of makes you think it was good. I think it was good. I had a good time. You laughed a lot for someone who's not having a good <laughs> I time. A, with me. I had a great time. I just I'm trying to imagine it from an audience perspective. And see <laughs> Dude, <laughs> your, res- your response to my question was very fucking funny. Uh, very good. <laughs> that, that's definitely a highlight of an episode right there. Uh-huh. OK, I, I think I think that's a good place to end it, too, because we're kind of leaving them on a high note. They're going to hopefully forget about when Andrew read the newspaper for like <laughs> four minutes. Hey, and <laughs> well, there you have it. You've listened to another episode <laughs> of the F*** Face Podcast. How much fun was that? 
What do you think? Was this the best episode we've ever done? Early reports are no, but you don't <laughs> never know. We'll see. It could be like the election. Who knows how many votes are going to come in at 3 a.m.? We'll see you next time. Six teams bring their best recipes to Ribfest. Oh, oh, shit. A thousands it's of a hungry of patrons for weekend feast of ribs cooked by world-class rib teams. Wash down cut, with craft cut. beer, no, we're cider, done. It's and over. wine. I'm gonna, no, I'm being entertained by live music from local bands at Esquimalt <laughs> Rib Fest this year. The event, established in 2013, boasts six big rig barbecue what if Jack companies, just says next eight time on local face craft and it cuts brewers, straight back to this. and more than 20 live performances on stage. The Tasty Fun runs from Friday to Sunday at Bullen Park. The event has such a happy vibe to it. It still has the feel of an outside house party in someone's backyard. I'm trying to figure Tom out how to Woods kick him. Chair of the Rib Discord Fest Society, channel. which hosts the event. The now. event is limited to six barbecue companies with Smoke Dem Bones, <laughs> a company from Kamloops, joining the roster <laughs> this year. In the spirit of friendly competition, the no Rivers one remember uh, yeah, members of them. This. Trying to read through my. Pop There's no other choice. Uh, oh. Papers folded. Yeah. Uh, the Ribbers, members yeah, of the rib teams bring their best ribs <laughs> and best rib sauces to the festival for both <laughs> yeah. a judging panel and bragging rights if they win the People's right, Choice Award. I'm cutting yeah, Look anyway, for newcomers. So. Hey guys, Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of F*** Face. There's a new achievement in Gems of War. Gavin has a terrible reputation. Who is the most competitive? Are Twiglets delicious? The boys are alone. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of F*** Face. Friday night. Close your eyes and you will swear that you were hearing Fleetwood Mac said voice. We're also lucky to get Juno Award winning Jack Semple and his cover band, The Horn Dogs, on Saturday. There will be free children's activities <laughs> with all 20 charitable and commercial vendors. Uh, the volunteer run festival has in conjunction with the Eskimo Firefighters Charitable Foundation and seven local nonprofit groups raised more than one million over the past nine years.